hormone excretion is lowered, then the fluids flow from the mouth through the enamel, through the dentin, into the pulp chamber, and the teeth have kind of a dull-looking appearance to them. And that's where you have the dental decay. Well, what is it that controls this is the next logical place to look. And diet is where it comes from. And that's why we look for the ancestral diet. Because when you are on the diet that your ancestors were eating 2,000 years ago, not your grandparents, but uh, way back, this is where you get your genetics from. When you're on your ancestral diet, the fluid flow is apt to go from the inside out. Well, the person who introduced me to the concept of dental decay was not Ralph Steinman, but it was Melvin Page at the other end of the country. He was down in Florida, and here Steinman was in California. The two of them together, put together, are the, as far as I can see, the total story on how to control dental decay. And I say that because Page had patients. Um, Steinman had rats, and Steinman did the radioactive studies and so on, did the hormonal studies. Melvin Page was using blood chemistry, and he found that when the serum phosphorus level dropped below 3.5 milligrams, there was dental decay. When it was 3.6 up to 4.0, there was no dental decay. And one thing that really amazed me, and I used to go down there about every other month to study with him, and it wasn't until the second year that he finally decided to start exposing his real truths. And he showed me a series of people. He'd been in practice for a long time. He'd been in practice maybe 65 years when I met him. And he showed records where people who had what's called rampant dental decay, which means probably five or six cavities every time you go to the dentist, he had records of people who had gone from the time they received his treatment. They had gone 50 years without a new cavity, five zero, 50 years without a cavity. He had records from people just going back into, I think Adam was one of the first ones on his list. But if you can go 50 years without a cavity, you got something. And what he was doing was watching the serum phosphorus as long as he could keep it above uh, 3.5, they didn't have dental decay. Well, what he was doing was controlling the fluid flow through the tooth. So I put the two together. It was very obvious, wasn't hard to do, that when the serum phosphorus levels above 3.5, then the fluid flow is going from the pulp chamber through the dentin, through the enamel, into the mouth. Now, Page got himself into trouble because what Page discovered was that the mouth is attached to the rest of the body. <laughs> now, I have heard the statement that the mouth is the barometer of the body's health. Well, this happens to be true, that when you do not have dental decay, you're in pretty good health. Well, what Page found was when he brought the phosphorus level above 3.5, Arthritis disappeared, heart disease disappeared, some of the cancers disappeared. All of these, quote, medical diseases, you know, each, each profession has a franchise on diseases. These diseases begin to get well. So they said, well, you're practicing medicine. He says, no, I'm not. I'm just healing up the gums and healing up the teeth. Uh, preventing dental decay. Well, the same process, the same endocrine system does not, is not limited just to the parotid gland. When the parotid gland is functioning properly, then all the glands are functioning properly. So diet is a much bigger control. The ancestral diet is a much bigger control than we ever thought it was. I mean, you can put sealants on. Okay, what happens if you put sealants? That's kind of a, a pig trail here. What do you mean by sealants? You mean sealing up the cavities? What sealants are is a thin coat of plastic that you put on over the tooth, and it is sold to prevent dental decay. That's going back to the day of toothworms saying that uh, we will not have an acid attack, we will not have the bacterial invasion and so on which Steinman proved a long time ago doesn't have anything to do with dental decay. 
But when you put a sealant over the tooth, you paint it with a plastic, you put the light to it, and it cures, you stop the physiological process of preventing dental decay. Now, this would be like uh, if, let's say that you don't want to breathe polluted air. So we put a clothespin over your nose and uh, duct tape over your mouth. You will not breathe polluted air. Now, you may not live very long either, but you're not going to breathe polluted air. This is like a cliffhanger. So where are we going? <laughs> Who's on not first? Yet. <laughs> Give me a few minutes here. Okay. I'm just presenting problems. Sure. No, no, I'm excited. This is really profound because what you're saying here is that dental decay has really been understood for quite a while, but that information and that paradigm and those connections have not found their way to the mainstream of the dental world. That's right. I talked to the professor of cariology. Now, what's a cariology? Caries is the dental term for dental decay. So the professor of cariology is the one who tells the dental students how to prevent dental decay. And I was talking to him, oh, this has been 10 or 15 years ago. I said, well, do you teach the work of Ralph Steinman? And he said, who? And that's what I'm talking about here. All this was published in the Journal of Dental Research of All Things that certainly teachers in dental schools should be reading. And over a period of these years, all of these extremely scientific studies were presented. And yet it is not taught in dental school. Therefore, dentists don't know about it. Therefore, patients aren't told about it. They're told to put on the sealant. You put on the sealant, and what happens? Well, the tooth can't breathe anymore. That fluid cannot flow from the pulp chamber through the dentin, through the enamel, to the mouth. It is, you know, like a clothespin over its nose. And I've had many dentists tell me, yeah, we take off the sealant and you fall into a cavity in there that uh, is practically into the pulp chamber already. That's because the tooth has demineralized. In the absence of bacteria, it is demineralized because it has no more nutrition. As people, if we stop eating for a year or two, we're going to be dead. In fact, I think it's something like 60 days that you're going to die if you haven't eaten. Well, that's what happens to a tooth. If it is not supplied with its nutrient, then it is going to die internally also. So sealants are another cover-up. They do not prevent dental decay. They do not get at the cause. The cause is the high carbohydrate, high refined sugar is what slows down the parotid hormone function. And that allows the tooth to suck the debris from the mouth into it and to demineralize and to take nutrition away. Now, what is it that makes the fluid flow go the right direction? Protein. Protein stimulates the parotid gland so that not only are we creating healthier teeth, we're creating healthier bodies. And here's where my work, what I have done, is take these men's work and expand on it for the last several decades. And there are chemicals in the blood that tell us What's going on? For instance, the proteins in the blood. One of the most important ones is albumin. And I've noticed over the years that the, quote, normal level for albumin keeps dropping down, down, down. Why? Because people are getting to be less and less healthy, and there is a direct relationship between serum albumin and health, and the normals are taken on what? Usually they're in hospitals on people who are sick where they got the blood drawn before they died. And you make the average of this, and 95% of those are called normal by definition. If you want to get real picky, it's 95.56% of the population. Well, I have not noted that 95.56% of the population are in good health. It may be the opposite. So our target area is toward disease, not toward health. I need to bring you back for a moment here. What allows for the phosphorus levels to be correct? How do we get those levels above 3.5? And what you're saying is, is that protein? 
That is protein. Okay. Got it. Protein is what stimulates.